Our next speaker here today is going to our honorary chair, Miss Iowa, Michaela Hughes Shaw, and faith chair, Chill Mike, Jill Michael. So they're going to go in order here. Uh, we're going to get Michaela up here first. Miss Iowa of 2018, Michaela Hughes Shaw. Miss Clinton County, Michaela Hughes Shaw, was crowned Miss Iowa 2018. Michaela attended the University of Iowa, where she received a Bachelor of the Arts, Journalism and Mass Communication, Certificate in Critical Cultural Competence, and some of her accomplishments include her HOPE Suicide Awareness Campaign. Let's welcome NAMI Walk's Honorary Chair, Miss Iowa. Oh yeah, I'm short too. Okay, here you go. There we go. Work. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, well, hello, everybody. How are we doing today? Good, great. That great. didn't sound like you're doing that great. <laughs> How are we doing today? Great. Okay, awesome. Well, hello and welcome, everyone. My name is Michaela Hugh Shaw, and I am the current Miss Iowa 2018. I know I sound like I'm not relevant anymore, but I swear I am. I, <laughs> I will give up my crown in June of 2019 to the next girl. So whoever else will be serving our state, I'm excited to see who will be the next girl. Um, so what a lot of people don't know about the Miss America program in general is that every single contestant, whether you are at the local, state, or national level, does have a platform or what we now call a social impact initiative for our year of service. And we don't call it a reign, even though that's really cool, you know, the reign of Miss Iowa. We do call it a year of service because with the four points of our crown standing for scholarship, style, success, and service, that scholarship and that service are our two most important ones. If I can say that, I think they are the two most important ones because the job of Miss Iowa is to serve your community. And so I'll talk to you a little bit more about my platform as we go on, but I just wanted to thank everyone here at NAMI, Johnson County. Uh, they've just been so welcoming. It's been awesome to be an honorary walk chair for this year. And I have also been involved with... Um, I, mean, I, th I think it's Greater Mississippi, it's the Scott County NAMI as well, and I've partnered with the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention throughout my year of service, the Iowa chapter, and I am the founder of How About Hope, which stands for helping others and providing encouragement, with this, which is for both mental health and suicide awareness. And so winning Miss Iowa is an interesting feat. Uh, you do compete. Uh, have any of you ever been to a pageant? Raise your hand. We have like three people, okay. <laughs> and so we do compete in, a very, in various phases of competition in order to win the crown. But when you win the crown, you ultimately win a foundation for service. Um, I get a chance to travel all across the state and, and just talk and share my story. I get to hang out with princesses who are three years old. I get to visit nursing homes and play my violin there. You honestly never know where the day will take you. I have to say, my most unique experience so far has been visiting a veterans retreat in Washington County called uh, English River Outfitters, or Hero Lodge. And I tried raccoon stew with them, so that was... <laughs> That was interesting. It's, it's, it tastes about how you would think that it would taste. No, it was actually pretty good. It was like a, an interesting roast beef. But what was important about, yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a moment in time. It was so funny. They were like, oh, we're having a potluck. We caught all of the food. I said, what are we eating? And I tried raccoons, so that was... That was that, but uh, I have a special place in my heart for veterans because they too deal with mental illness and PTSD, and uh, so it was really cool to just sit down and have a conversation with them about that too. And I think what is the most rewarding about being Miss Iowa and being connected to so many people across the state is meeting so many people who have dealt with mental illness, suicidal ideation, they've lost someone to suicide, they have someone in their family who has dealt with mental illness. Um, and I had an experience the other day where I was speaking to the Burlington Kiwanis. Sorry if I look like I'm thinking, I probably am. I can never keep track of what I do day to day anymore. Um, 
But I met a man, his name was Rich, he was 80 years old, and he said that him and his wife had been together for nearly 60 years, and she had dealt with mental illness for most of their marriage, and we just had a moment, and that was really, really rewarding. I love being able to connect with other people who have stories, because that's how we can break stigmas, of, stigmas if we continue to talk about it and share our personal stories, even if it can be hard at times. And like I said, I travel all across the state, and so self-care for me is crucial. I actually don't do as much of it as I should. Um, I always say that my hobbies are Netflix and sleeping when I get a chance. I don't think those really count as hobbies, but that's about all that I have time for right now because I just think that it's so important for me to make the most out of this year and continue to use my voice and my platform to inspire change in our mental health culture here in Iowa. And so when you win the title of Miss State, so Miss Illinois, Miss Iowa, Miss Indiana, you know, Miss California, wherever you may be, you get a chance to travel all across your state, but what is more important than that is that you get a chance to compete for Miss America. And so I competed for Miss America in September of this past year. It was the craziest, craziest experience I've ever had in my entire life. I was gone from my family for two weeks. And during those two weeks of the competition in Atlantic City, New Jersey, I got to see my family three times for 45 minutes each. So it was crazy, but I got a chance to bond with a lot of the girls from all across the country, and so I always make the joke that I will always save money while traveling across the country from now on because I do feel like I have a friend in every single state. And what was really awesome for me was to know that our Miss Illinois, our Miss North Dakota, our Miss Ohio, and our Miss Kansas, and I think I'm actually missing even a couple, uh, we all had mental health platforms and so that was really awesome because that means that we have more people talking about it all across the country. And we actually got a chance to advocate for our platform as well at Miss America too. So when I was on that stage, I got to share about my experiences, which I'll get into too. Um, and so I got to speak to a couple thousand people there in that room, which was amazing. Really, really rewarding. And so my reason... Why did I start How About Hope? It was never a plage it was never created just for a pageant platform. It was actually something that I created before I got into pageantry. I did my first pageant when I was 18, which is kind of late, and people are usually surprised. I've had a very short pageant career. I started competing consistently when I was 20 years old, and I'm now 22, and I've gone through the entire Miss America system, so that's it for me. I'm retiring, but that's, that's okay. <laughs> I think I've... I had a good run so far, but my reason is that when I was 17, I went through a very deep bout of depression, and I've always grown up in a home with a mother with mental illness. She now suffers from anxiety with very frequent panic attacks, and so she is on medication for that. She has also dealt with postpartum depression, and I also dealt with suicidal ideation, so there's a lot going on there. And... I think it's so important to share that because there are still so many stigmas attached to dealing with these issues, even though one in five adults will deal with this. So, I mean, that's 20% of adults. You would think that we would be more accepting, but we still aren't. And that's so why, once again, it's so important just to continue to talk about it. And so any time that I'm advocating, I think of my mother, and I think about even the people in our family who have said hurtful things, and they may not realize that they're hurtful, but they just don't understand. And so I can't make them understand, but I can have, I can inspire them to be kind about trying to understand what's going on. Because it is, yeah, I'm sure you all have experienced this too. It's one thing to advocate and to talk, but there are so many people who haven't been affected by it that may not be receptive. And that's really sad, and that's why it's important that we all in this room continue to do what we do. And one really cool thing that I get to do um, during my year, I have started a school tour. I actually partnered with the Cedar Rapids Hope Walk. I hope that some of you have heard of that. And I have been traveling all across the state, but specifically April and and we're in March, right? I told you guys I can't keep up with my life anymore. <laughs> but I've been traveling to various school and communities um, in the Lynn County area. So if anybody in here has some Lynn County connections, I know we have Lynn County NAMI over there. Thank you for coming, too. That's really awesome. I'm sure we'll chat after this. 
But yeah, if any of you have school connections, please do let me know because I have been traveling and sharing my story and using um, a presentation that I created called The Five Lessons of Hope. So I dive into mental health and suicide awareness, but on top of that, I dive into what it means to overcome struggles. I share a lot of my story. I'm always very vulnerable. Um, when I was in high school, my dad was in prison, and so that had a very, very big effect on me and how and my growth. Um, my mom, while also going through everything else, she went through a divorce and she had major back surgery, and she lost her job right before I went to college. And so I always just try to share some of the most vulnerable parts of my life because you never know who you're going to connect with. You never know who's in the room. You never know who will have who will be touched by your story. I was at a school visit the other day and I said that on stage and there was a little girl that came up to me and cried afterwards. We just had a very human moment because her dad has been away since she was born and that's why I just think it's so important. Regardless of what your story is, it's so important to just be human and to connect with others. So I share that with students all across the state. It's been super rewarding, super fun. I was at Boone Middle School yesterday, and there are 600 students there, and it was really funny. Um, it was like I was at a rally or something. They were so excited about life, and I really appreciated that I did. I told them that they were my favorite school, and I actually meant it, but... I get to do some really awesome things, but what I do want to leave you all with is just a couple statements. Open conversation brings acceptance. Stigmas are meant to be broken. Learn the signs and be willing to be there for someone. Don't just say that you're going to be there for someone. Know your resources. Spread hope wherever you go. You see what I did there. And lastly, be gentle with yourself. You're doing the best that you can. Thank you.